Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this episode of Second Home. I quote Oscar Wilde. I regard theatre to be the greatest of all art forms. It is the most immediate way in which a human being can share with another the sense of what it is to be a human. Today, it's all about theatre. ICSK has invited artists from India, legendary and multi-talented artists, who are going to be performing the play Barf. Artists such as Shorab Shukla, Sadia Siddiqui and Sunil Palmel will be here performing on stage for the audience of Kuwait. We'll be having conversations with all of them along with the ICS member Rajesh Sahani. So stay tuned. Hi friends, I'm really looking forward to perform my play Barf for Indian Cultural Society Kuwait. Barf is a very interesting play, it's a thriller, but it's much more than that. And I hope to see you there and we'll enjoy the play together. Thank you. It's with great pleasure that I bring to you the, mo the most popular and talented actor on theater, in TV, Saurabh Shukla. Welcome to our show. Thank you so much. Saurabh, tell us about your starting journey. Uh, where did you start off? We'd love to know what was that moment in time when you thought, you know what, I like this and I'm going to continue doing so this. So it's very interesting that my journey started like any other human being that I was born. <laughs> the only thing is that I was born in a, in a, in a family uh, which is an artist family. So my father uh, was a musician, my mother also a musician. My mother is a very uh, eminent musician. My father also uh, was a great uh, scholar. Mm. My mother happens to be the first lady tabla player uh, in the world uh, on professional stage. Tabla, as you know, uh, it's an Indian instrument and it's a male instrument. Mm. So in her time, uh, when she started, she, when she picked up that, that particular instrument, uh, everybody was shocked because women were not supposed to play tabla and she said no I want to play it and uh, so I was born in a family like that uh, there was always an atmosphere of art I was never restricted uh, from uh, practicing any kind of art in mm -hmm. fact I was encouraged to mm -hmm. do that and uh, so I tried my hands in everything mm -hmm. Uh, when I was a child I tried my hand in paintings mm -hmm. uh, then I tried my I, I tried my luck in singing, hmm. uh, everything, uh, because I came from a musician's music, family. Yes. But then I got really bored because there was so much of music at home that I wanted to get my own identity. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, so I ended up uh, choosing theatrical arts. Hmm. Uh, in between, I tried many other things. Hmm. I tried, like every Indian boy, I tried cricket, <laughs> uh, and I failed. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I said, okay, fine, let's, let me do that. And I think that was my calling. Hmm. And I was fascinated uh, by films as, as a child. Hmm. Uh, and I wanted to make films. Hmm. I never wanted to act per se. Film as a whole always fascinated, fascinated me. You. So when I came in college and I was in Delhi, you must understand uh, what it is. Hmm. So Delhi has no connection with films. And at that time, it had no connection, absolutely. Yeah. Only Bombay had connections, and yes. we didn't have any relatives or anybody. Yeah. So Bombay was a distant dream. Yeah. And how will films happen? And I was a student, so a friend of mine one day told me that, why don't we do theater? Yeah. Because theater does not have a camera. It has everything else. <laughs> it has a story. It has acting. It has performances. Well it put. has music. Yes. So let's practice this art. Hmm. And if we are lucky, then we can do tomorrow, we can make films. Hmm. And that's how I came into theatre and I completely fell in love with theatre. Hmm. 
<laughs> and uh, for 10 extensive years, I did theater and nothing else. And I never thought of coming to Bombay. So this was my journey uh, mm. from my childhood till my daily theater days. Right. But when you did come to the movies, you gained popularity very quickly in your roles. Uh, we all know you like um, Kallu Mama became this very popular character that everyone related to. You were so real. And then you've done movies like you moved on to Bandit Queen and some very memorable roles there. I was in, in Delhi and, uh, and Shekhar Kapoor was visiting uh, Delhi that time. He was making Bandit Queen, mm. which was a foreign film. Hmm. Uh, foreign production. It was an Indian film, but a foreign production. And uh, so he was casting everybody, and uh, he came, he met me, and he liked me. Hmm. But at that point of time, I was offered three projects one in England, hmm. and I was supposed to be in England for the rest of my life. And uh, there was another very big film which was made by Bertolucci called Little Buddha. Hmm. And I was about to get a role in that. Hmm. And uh, then there were series, four series which, were, which I wrote and they were passed in A++ category. So I was flying high. <laughs> right. So when Shekhar asked me that what am I doing, I told him that I'm doing this. Hmm. So he understood that I'm busy. Hmm. So he said I'm making a film and I wish you were there. And then everybody, the casting was done. Hmm. They were about to shoot the film. Hmm. Ma, I got a letter from England saying that, sorry, but uh, some other actor is doing that character now. Hmm. So that was out. Hmm. I didn't get, get through in the Bartolucci film. Hmm. And the four series which are passed in my name, hmm. uh, they came under litigation and that project stopped. So suddenly I was, with everything, I was at zero. And I was really sad because Bandit Queen was the film which I could have been there and I was not there. But just before leaving the film, uh, leaving for, for the shooting of the film, mm. Shekhar came to see a performance of mine mm. and he kept looking at me and I got a ticket. And I went to the shoot and I shot a very important character. Mm. Later, Shekhar told me mm. that he came to see the play, he saw my performance and he said that I have to have this actor and he created a character uh, in the film, which was a very important character. So I was very lucky that after this whole thing, I still got through. Of course, I would call it destiny. Yes, <laughs> and then Shekhar, after that, he called me to Bombay mm. uh, to do a series. Mm. And that's how my career started. Now, as you correctly said, it seems bed of roses that, you know, you were picked up from Delhi and then you got a work. A special role made yeah, out special, for you. Yeah, special, correct. Sure, none other than... <laughs> correct. And then uh, you come to Bombay and then you're welcomed by everyone. Mm. But that's not the truth. Mm. So, and I would not say that it was a bad time. It was a great time. Mm. People ask me, so you must have struggled a lot. Mm. And I tell them that struggle was great fun. Because in struggle, I had friends. I had parties. Mm. Everybody used to meet each other and hug each other because we all were vulnerable. Ji. We needed each other. Mm. So it was great time. Ji. So when I came to Bombay, I came with work mm. and Satya happened. And Satya made us overnight stars. <laughs> of course, of course. But then the real struggle started. It's not about reaching somewhere. Mm. It's about reaching further. Mm. So you go to one pinnacle and then the mountain gets higher. higher. Of course. So you think, oh, he's <laughs> lucky that he has reached there. Okay. But then there is another mountain to climb, which is even tougher. So people forget that. <laughs> and uh, just to give you in just hmm. one line, after Satya, hmm. there was a slight downhill for me. Hmm. Because people called me a good actor, but hmm. they were not offering me 
uh, rolls with substance. Mm. And I was getting frustrated. Mm. So they were calling me for small little little rolls here and there and which was not satisfying. Mm. And there was a time I started telling people, okay, listen, I don't act. So please don't call me. Really? Yes, I started telling them. I said, mm. I'm a writer. Uh, Satya, by the way, I wrote also. So I was a co-writer in Satya. And everybody knew that I write and I want to make films. So, and there was a time mm. in those 10 years, there was a phase mm. of three or four years when I had no work. And uh, I had my study mm. where I used to go every morning thinking that something will happen in the evening mm. and realize in the evening that nothing has happened. And I used to switch on my computer and I used to stare there and nothing even I couldn't write. I forgot how to write. Mm. Those must have been difficult yeah, times. Yeah, it was a difficult time. And then there was a time when I asked myself one day, I was sitting alone and I asked myself, Saurabh, is it really that you're talented or mm. you just think that you're talented? That's a very, very it was, hard question yeah, to answer. So I went through that. Mm. I went through that also. Mm. But then one day I got a call from Anurag Basu and he said, I'm making a film called Barfi. And I was revived. <laughs> I suddenly got my interest back. Mm. I went to that shoot. Then Jolly LLB happened the same year, which got me national award. Mm. And then it just kept happening. So uh, I don't know what to draw from it. Mm. But the thing is, success or failure, they both are not permanent. And you have to understand that. Yes. So never get depressed. Mm. When you're failing, mm. it's a great time when you're failing yes. because it's teaching you something. True. And when you're getting successful, don't think it's permanent. Yes. It's going to go. You say something very, uh, very profound, and I think it's very important that uh, everyone gets this message. Um, so I read something on similar lines that success is not final, failure is not fatal. Correct. And it is, it is um, the courage to continue that counts. Yeah. Uh, which is exactly what uh, you've done here um, and that you know even though you had those years you were waiting for something right and you stuck through it uh, yeah. you got this opportunity in your back and um, that says a lot about who you are as a person yeah and also I mean it's 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 to everyone I mean it's it's up to you how you perceive life hmm. but also like you were telling me before this interview you were telling me that uh, I somewhere said that you know uh, uh, people liked me and that's how I started liking myself and this is true we realize our potential mm. because it's a mirror which tells us how you look right yes. so people are mirror Gee. so your, your surrounding is your mirror which keeps telling you that how good you are and that's how you like yourself Gee. but at the same time mm. you don't live for the mirror you live for yourself. Yes. <laughs> so the point is that, <laughs> yes, people liked me, so I liked myself. But if I r spend my rest of my life pleasing others, it'll be a lie. Don't do that. Yes. Live your own life. So you're <laughs> living your own life. I think so. I think so. And what is it that you're looking forward to in the future? After all these achievements, I mean, you've created a niche in the industry which is really only yours. Nobody else can take that. I think we all, we are, all human beings are social animals. Hmm. So we need people. Hmm. We need to be loved. We need to be accepted. We need to be with people. And that's what you look forward. I mean, why does anybody work? Hmm. Why do you want to be successful? Why do I want to be famous? Famous means that people know hmm. me, they love me. Right. So I think at the very basis of it, hmm is that that you're being accepted you're being loved you're being validated for you're, who you are yeah validation i don't know so much <laughs> i mean validation is slightly a tricky word <laughs> but yes yes you are you're, you're loved and accepted right so that's what i look for i don't look for anything else beautiful i mean that is simple and yet very profound because if you think about it that is really at the core of any human being and what his wants and desires could be 
uh, and you talk about it as a need, not just a desire. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and uh, it brings me to a very uh, neat realization because when I ask people what they want to do, they're, they're, they're ambitious and there are so many dreams and what you want to achieve. But take a step back and think about what is it that you really want. And uh, this is at the core of it. Just being I happy with who you are and uh, being surrounded with people you want to be with. So there's a recent film uh, in which I happen to be a part of it. It's called Bala, which released here yes. in Kuwait also. And it did very well in India also. Yes. The film says the same thing. It doesn't matter how you look. Hmm. I mean, if you're happy with yourself, if you're content with yourself, then I think you're done. Right. And people become beautiful when they're confident inside, hmm. when they're beautiful inside. It's not the outer beauty everybody looks for. Hmm. I mean, yes, you, you, you get enamored by a certain structure, hmm. of, but then every human being is beautiful. That's how nature has made us, that we are beautiful. You have to feel beautiful, that's it. So I would definitely say from your journey, you've, been, you've come a long way. Uh, you've you know, um, gained a lot of talent and apne patthar ki baat ki thi shishe ki baat ki thi to us baat se mujhe ek sher zarur yaad aata hai ki har pesh ravera use rehbar nahi kehte har aage chalne wale ko leader nahi har pesh ravera use rehbar nahi kehte har cheez jo chamke use jauhar nahi kehte aina haqeeqat mein hai patthar lekin ban jaye jab aina use patthar nahi kehte wah kya baat hai क्या बात है सो माशाल्लाह आप वो आईना बन चुके हैं और जिसमें हम वी सी अ लॉट ऑफ आर सेल्स इन द इन द स्किट्स दैट यू परफॉर्म एंड दैट इज द सक्सेस ऑफ एनी ड्रामा एनी प्ले बिकॉज द ऑडियंस नीड्स टू कनेक्ट विथ हु दे आर वाचिंग सो फॉर अस सिटिंग एज एन ऑडियंस वाचिंग यू अप ऑन स्टेज आई थिंक योर सक्सेस कम्स बिकॉज वी कनेक्ट विथ हु यू आर एंड वॉट यू डू ऑन स्टेज So for today's play, what are your expectations? Okay, uh, uh, I'm very excited. Uh, number one, because it's my first performance in Kuwait. Mm. Uh, I've never performed in Kuwait. I have performed in Dubai, mm. uh, performed in Oman, uh, other places, but not in uh, Kuwait. Mm. Barf is a very special play for me. Mm. <coughs> it is because of a couple of reasons. Mm. On stage, you see comedies, you see sh social drama, Uh, expressionist uh, work you see but what you see in lesser amount is a thriller mm. barf is a thriller uh, it is set in kashmir mm. which is a beautiful valley mm. in in india and uh, it's in the deep winters and it's about three people so it's a experience mm. that i and I all I wanted to achieve in this play was that audience should feel that seclusion, that chill, uh, that night in the snow. Hmm. It's That's I would say very difficult to achieve because it is. But a thriller on stage. Yes, it is. Uh, but uh, the audience is an amazing thing. Hmm. They have an amazing eye. Hmm. It's a stage, but they believe, and what they believe, it happens. Yes. So th this is what uh, Barf is. and uh, it's a beautiful story it's a poignant story hmm. uh, so it's not just a thriller hmm. but there is a poignant story hidden within that thriller uh, and i'm very excited and a bit nervous hmm. that the show should go right right and you know you know because in films you always have a second take and then you also have all these props to help you cry and you know if you're not in the mood then you can always take 5 minutes and then do it again <laughs> yeah. uh, but in theater you have to do what you have to do right then and there you have Correct. no other options if you have to cry you have to get those tears out now yeah and true. if they don't come then it's like oh shoot <laughs> yeah. but i'm sure you didn't ever face that problem i don't know i have i have i've been lucky to get a good audience always hmm. because it's also the audience which helps and doing all these things which are what you're saying hmm. you don't do it alone hmm. it's because it's a live audience hmm. you can feel the vibe I read it somewhere. Some some very very great actor. It was asked to him, "Why do you do this?" Mm. And he said, "For a collective laughter <laughs> or a collective cry." 
Oh wow, that's 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 powerful. And you do it every single time you're up on stage. I don't know whether I do it because <laughs> there are other people also. <laughs> my 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 light designer does it. Yes. Uh, the set designer does it. My costume designer does it. My co-actors do it. Music guy does it. So it's it's again it's we we team. don't do it alone. We are also it's you know dependent. There, there might be one person on stage, but. There, there are 20 people behind. You will find the audience of Kuwait so inviting, so welcoming. They are all looking forward to this. And Ashfa Khan, the president of ICS, yeah. always helps um, the people of Kuwait to, you know, because he brings people yes. like you, such talented uh, programs. Thank you. अब क्या चाहिए तुम्हें क्यों क्या सिर्फ तुम ही चाह सकती हो जो जब चाह वही किया जिसे चाह उसे राइट किया और उसे छोटा दिखाया कोई अगर छोटा नहीं है तो उसे छोटा नहीं दिखाया जा सकता रिया प्रियंका किसी का तोहफा गिराकर उसे किस करने के लिए मजबूर करके कोई बड़ा भी नहीं बन सकता क्या इस वक्त तुम मुझसे यही सब कहने आई हो नहीं मैं तुमसे ये कहने आई हूँ कि मैं एक स्मॉल टाउन की लड़की हूँ और हमारे प्यार की परिभाषा अलग है प्रिया हमारे घर में ये नहीं सिखाया जाता कि अपनी खुशी हासिल करने के लिए दूसरों को दुख पहुँचाओ अगर कोई मेरी खुशी छीन रहा है जिसका मुझे पूरा हक है तो उसे दुख पहुँचाना बिल्कुल जायज है प्रियंका मैं तुमसे लड़ने नहीं आई हूँ मैं तो सिर्फ ये कहने आई हूँ कि जिस प्यार में झूठ बोला जाता है चाले चली जाती है वो सच्चा प्यार हो ही नहीं सकता बिल्कुल गलत वो सच्चा प्यार है इसीलिए आप कुछ भी कर सकते हैं यहाँ तक कि खून भी और मैं अपना पाप पुण्य तुमसे नहीं सीखना चाहती रिया हम दोनों कितना अलग सोचते हैं एक दूसरे को कुछ सिखा भी नहीं सकते अगर तुम राहुल के बारे में बात करने आई हो या उसे भीख में मांगने आई हो तो भूल जाओ मैं राहुल को नहीं छोड़ सकती किसी भी कीमत I'm extremely excited to bring to you Sadia Siddiqui who's a television movie and a theater artist. Her one of her most memorable roles people remember her for is uh, in Bani ki apni baat where she's played the role of Priya a character people have come to love. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Sadia it's uh, a pleasure to uh, be sitting here and talking to you because I've seen a lot of your work and uh, I never really thought this would be happening here today <laughs> Thank um you so much. but um, th is this your first time in Kuwait yes it is <laughs> yes and, and have you get a chance to see a little bit of Kuwait Do you not like at all no. I, in fact uh, I traveled uh, all night hmm. and I have been just trying to sleep <laughs> because I have a performance in the evening but i have lived in saudi arab when i was a child okay so any time i come to a country um, a gulf country and i suddenly remember my childhood of course because i was old enough to rem uh, remember mm. everything so yeah so it somehow feels <laughs> that yeah it's home home oh wow, that's <laughs> beautiful and the name of our program is second home oh and it's all about you know how different uh, expat population here in kuwait uh, comes and lives harmoniously mm -hmm. uh, there are around 52 different nationalities here in really? kuwait really that's so wonderful and we're ha very happy to have you and uh, your crew here your team uh, your entire team um but tell us about your journey when was the first time you knew that this is this is the love of your life and this is what you want to do actually i had never wanted to be an actress really my mother is a psychologist wow. and she is a writer she is a uh, urdu scholar hmm. i wanted to be a psychologist hmm. so i was studying with that in my mind hmm. and um when i was in school somebody saw me hmm. and they asked me to act hmm. and i said no i don't want to act because i was never interested in makeup in you know always looking at myself in the mirror hmm. i was never interested i i loved studying 
So I said, uh, my mother said, it doesn't matter, go and meet them. Hmm. So they auditioned me hmm. and I failed in my audition. Puri tarha. I Achha. mean, it was like horrible audition. Hmm. Because I was a very shy child. Hmm. So I said, I'm sorry, I can't do this. And I left. Hmm. But they selected me anyhow. I was in school at that time and they made that series. It's called Ham Rahi. Hmm. Yes. And my character became so popular that I was called for the Emmy Awards and I was still in school and I went to America and I was crying and I was very angry people were coming and I was not at all interested in going to America. I yeah, you, you, yeah. Sound, you sound like a very, you know, very unique. In the, yeah, people get very surprised. They like, what? <laughs> I said, yeah. And I remember I went to America. Even for my visa, I said, I went to the embassy and I said, just give me 14 days I had an invitation so he saw and he said I'll give you a multiple 10 year visa I said okay mm -hmm. so, but I don't have you don't have enough money so can you give me some more money I said that's all I have so he said okay I'll wait for you go and bring the money I said but just give me 14 days I have to go and study <laughs> anyway I went to America and I remember I was uh, there in a very beautiful big hotel and it was a glass this is uh, if I may ask how old are you this uh, I this was in school so I think 14? I must have been like 14? yeah that hmm. age my god that must have been overwhelming were you did you travel alone with my other hmm. uh, series members like right. Himani Shivpuri was also there hmm. and the director and the producer hmm. and the writer hmm. But I was like, I didn't want to go. <laughs> and uh, I anyway went and I remember I was crying. I'm like, I want to go home. Please, can you finish this fast? And I danced with uh, Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. And uh, what? Bold, Bold and Beautiful. And beautiful. Yes, so all those actors time. were there. My scene was shown on a big screen and I was I was dancing with them. And But I was not interested. So when... I came back and my friends saw and they heard my stories and they were like, wow, you're so lucky you danced with those characters. I said, yeah, <laughs> what's so lucky? <laughs> because I never thought as an actress. Right. This was, this just happened to me. But I'm very happy it happened to me hmm. because uh, in my case, the career found me rather me finding oh. the career. I know. You know, I'm, acting found me right. and I'm happy. Hmm. Today, if you ask me if I can do anything else, yes, I think I can go back to studies. But as a profession, I love being an actor. Yeah, I love being on stage. And I wouldn't say you're too far away. I mean, I hate to take away credit from either one of the professions, but acting has a lot to do with understanding psychology yes. of the human mind. So when I was studying psychology, I loved abnormal psychology. Hmm. And I used to feel, wow, I mean, th this you just, you know, be under the character and you believe in that character and you live like that it's wow how does the mind work and now this is what I'm doing <laughs> I'm actually being an abnormal person who lives many characters right. and doesn't get disturbed about it <laughs> <laughs> like multiple personality. Yes. But you know, I've heard um, that film industry can do that to you or maybe even theatre. Like if you play a de depressed character mm. for a long time, then it somehow starts to show in your life, in your real life, like you become depressed. And maybe it has got to do with the fact that you have to believe so much in your character mm -hmm. that it's sometimes difficult to then get out of it. Yeah, sometimes it happens. Like I, I remember I did a film. Mm and it was a very very intense film and it was pretty early in my life so um, we shot for a month every day I was shooting for that film and one day it was the last day of the shoot and it got over so the next day I was home I was fine I woke up late and I was happy being home and I was with my m chatting with my mother and by evening I started crying I said who am I these are not my clothes this is not my house where is my world and my mother got scared and she called the director and the director was a woman and uh, so the director Farida Mehta she came to my house and for next five days she kept meeting me so to slowly get me out of that also in Barf when I opened when I did the bar, uh, this play this hmm. play is about a it's a very intense role for me hmm. if you're watching the show today you will understand and in the beginning for at least first 15 shows I would say I have a breakdown scene in this play hmm. and that comes right in the end hmm. 
I could, I used to after the show is over, uh, everybody's back to the hotel, everybody's having dinner, laughing. But I, I used to not be able to stop crying. I would go in my room and I would cry and cry and cry. I wouldn't be able to stop myself. So this happened to me for a very long time. Now I'm fine. After the show is over, I'm okay. I can laugh, I can eat, I can sleep. <laughs> but yes, this happens. If you feel the character too intensely, it hmm. definitely um, has its hmm. effect and it takes a little while to get out. Yeah. With some characters, hmm. not all, but yeah, intense characters, sometimes yes. <laughs> happens to me at least. <laughs> So this is theater where everything is first take and everything has, it's intense, like you said. What about movies? How has that experience been for you? Beautiful. I think um, the uh, television, films and stage, they both are such different mediums hmm. that they, each of them requires a different approach. Hmm. So uh, in a film also, if you have to do a certain um, shot, hmm. one shot, many times I wouldn't say that um, that is equally difficult for me than uh, compared to being on stage and there is no cut hmm. and I have to in one go hmm. live the entire character hmm. so they both have their own challenges hmm. um, I wouldn't say I prefer this or that hmm. but definitely I feel theater is a little bit more challenging, challenging. Yeah, because you can't escape. You have to live your character completely. Right. Sadia, if the entire world was listening to you for this next one minute, what would you be telling them? Uh, I can only talk about... Um, I feel that we all are human beings and we all are very same, basically. We have, everybody has fears, everybody has concerns, everybody has hunger, needs and desires. I just feel that we should have more respect for each other. And um, it'll be great if we can coexist respectfully together. And we can be, instead of being a world of many countries, we can be world of many kind of people. Beautiful. That'll be really nice. I mean. But I know it's very idealistic, it's not going to happen, <laughs> at least in my lifetime, but I can uh, definitely dream about it. Absolutely, and I'm with you on that, so maybe more people will come together, people who are listening to this uh, will come together, inshallah, that's a beautiful thing to say, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of Kuwait says that, and yes, um, when a lot of people come together and think uh, on the same lines, then there is a chance that it will happen, yeah, so yeah. I'm positively looking to a world full of people who respect more each yes. other more. Thank you so much, Sadia, Thank for talking you so to much. us. I wish Thank you the you. very best from the team of Quay TV too. I'm sure we'll do great. Thank you so much. <laughs>